Back in kindergarten, we're all taught that there are five senses. Sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Aristotle defined these in his book, De Anima. He then wrote, one might be confident that there is not another sense beside the five. And we've been listening this way ever since. But... Who's to say an old Greek was right? Our ability to sense is incredibly complex. When Aristotle came up with his definitive list, he linked them to visible sense organs. But modern neuroscience recognizes there's more to it than that. If you close your eyes and put your finger near to your forehead, don't touch it, how do you know where your finger is? It's because you have position sense called proprioception. That's Bruce Sturry, a Scottish genealogist and author who wrote about sensory perception. You can open your eyes now. If you get up and walk around, do you trip over your own feet? Well, hopefully not. Your sense of sight prevents you from walking into a wall, but proprioception tells your brain where your feet are, so you can walk without falling over yourself. And this is different from just feeling the ground under your feet. Scientists believe this sense works with receptors in your joints, ligaments, and muscles to give you an awareness of your body. It's also why your little league coach told you to keep your eye on the ball. You didn't need to watch where your hand was in order to catch it. It doesn't stop there. There are actually some pretty extensive lists of other senses that vary depending on how you define them. By their popular definition, senses are restricted to five sensory organs. But what about the organs that didn't make the cut? There are two sensory organs in your ear alone, and they're both responsible for very different things. One picks up sound waves for your sense of hearing, and the other maintains balance or equilibrioception. We can stay upright because there's a vestibular system inside our ears. It's made up of fluid-filled semicircular canals and small hairs that pick up movements. The brain combines signals from the vestibular system with other senses to maintain balance. Try standing on one leg. Easy, right? Now, shut your eyes. It's hard to do that with your eyes closed, at least without practice. That's because vision makes it easier to balance as it clarifies the orientation of the world around you. This partial reliance on vision is also why some people get motion sickness. When the movement you see around you doesn't match the signals the vestibular system is sending to the brain, you get disoriented. Organs aside, the list of senses really starts to expand when you define them based on receptors in your body. We'd arguably have to list thousands based on smell alone. Or we'd create subcategories like we already have for taste, based on an outdated taste map. Touch can be broken down into categories too. When you hold your hand over a hot stove, you can feel heat without touching it. That's thermoception. It takes an entirely different group of receptors in your skin to recognize changes in temperature. We can also separate things like pressure and pain. These are different sensations based on different receptors that send signals to a different part of your brain. Listing just five senses means we're leaving out a lot of things that actually keep us alive and functioning on a daily basis. And don't even get me started on the senses we don't have. So this begs the question, is teaching five senses really the best way? It's just an easy shorthand. I think the thing about the other five, the, the classic ones, they don't only work that way. That's how we tend to talk about them. It's about the outside world. When we're young, learning these five senses is a really simple way to make sense of the world around us. These senses are often based on external stimuli. And because we have visible organs to link them to, they're easy to test in a classroom. We can touch objects, hear music, see the classroom, smell a flower, taste our lunch. But what happens when we feel hot or cold in a room, or we lose balance and fall over? These senses are hard to ignore, but they can't be classified as the ones we learn. We don't have a lot of conscious awareness of how complicated our physical bodies are when they move about the world and the processing involved in that. Because as soon as you do think about that, then you, you have to start thinking with these issues around sensation within the body. Learning five basic senses is a pretty good place to start. But next time you stub your toe, think about that sensation. It's one of the many senses your kindergarten teacher never told you about.